Hello, this is Stephen Rosell, Senior Technical Specialist, Maya Specialist with Autodesk, and this is going to be part six of the Time Editor demo series that I have been posting. Uh, what you'll see here is I have the same character from the previous uh, demonstrations where I've covered a variety of just basic how-tos and tips and tricks and workflows for the time editor. And what we're going to cover here is how to use animation layers in conjunction with the time editor to make corrections on top of existing animation. Now, when I talk about animation layers, I am not talking about the legacy animation layers, which are still there, and they're still perfectly useful uh, for uh, just general purpose animation uh, or animation layering. But if you need to work with clips and layers, then there's a new layer system in the time editor for doing that. For instance, let's say that I wanted to take this walk that we have here. This is from a, a motion capture sequence that has been remapped onto this rig. And I want to go in and make a few changes to it. So for starters, I want to ultimately create a, a cycle out of this. So you can see here at the beginning, he's got some weirdness with his hands. And then as I get to the end, I've also got kind of some weirdness with the hands. I actually want to just steal a little section of this, borrow a little section of this, and then repurpose it for a walk cycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub to kind of the, the beginning, but not quite the beginning, kind of the front end of the animation. And I'm going to find a place where he plants his foot, and then I'm going to find a similar pose at the end of that. So I'm going to basically come in here and trim off the beginning, and I'll scrub through, and I'll let him take a step. So he takes one full cycle there. And I'm going to find a frame that is similar, maybe not exact, but similar. And I'm going to trim off the end of that. And then I'll just reposition this to frame zero. And now I've got the beginnings of a cycle. Now I'm going to talk about how to go about creating a cycle in a minute. But first, I want to go in and just make some adjustments to the underlying animation. Because for whatever reason, maybe it came from a different character, or maybe uh, the mapping was just off a little bit. Uh, there are a few things, like the hips are off, uh, the left hand kind of goes out a little too far. Uh, there's another problem with the, the foot here, that right foot as he plants it is a little bit weird because it kind of pops, the knee kind of pops right about there. Uh, so I want to go in and fix that. The toe is a little weird there. So I'm going to go in and fix all that with animation layers. So the first thing I want to do is go in and just do a simple correction on top of this existing animation with a single layer for specific parts. So what I want to do is just say, OK, right in here, I want to create, uh, correct the hip animation and maybe reposition the hands. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to create an additive animation layer. Now I can create overrides and additive, uh, which will do two different things. The override will basically go in and erase anything in the clip, or override it, for lack of a better word. Additive will add to it. It will basically work as a composite or an offset. So I'm going to use an additive clip. You can see if I expand that, right now it's empty. So if I select the clip, the clip layer, and I grab something like the hip control, and then I right click and say add, what you can see is it adds all of the associated channels for that particular controller. So I can actually add multiple controllers to this. So I can go in and I can also say grab the hands, and maybe I want to add the hands as well. So I'll say add selection, and now this clip layer contains the hands and it contains the hip. So now I want to start going in and keyframing this stuff. And I'm going to use just a specific uh, frame to initially do this. So I'm going to take the hips, and I'm going to offset those a little bit so that they line up a little bit more vertically with the body, because they were offset slightly. And then I'm going to set a keyframe. Now what that's going to do is it's going to keyframe only the hips, because that's all I have selected. It's not going to keyframe everything in the layer, but only what's selected and associated with the layer. So now you can see that that's going to persist over the entire animation. Now I've got an offset that persists from the beginning of the animation to the end. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see that removes the offset and enables it again. So now I can go through and I can do something similar with the hands. So let's just say that the hips more, look more or less good, but now I want to go in and correct the hands a little bit. Now I can do this on a specific frame, like right there, those hands, that left hand is out a little bit too far. So on that particular frame, I can come in here and I can say I want to kind of pull that back a little bit. I want to bring that a little closer into the body. I can set a keyframe. And again, that's going to key uh, that particular, if I scroll down, it's going to key that particular object within that layer. So I can just go in and continue to get set keyframes. Now you can see if I enable and disable that, both the hips and the hands have been offset over time. Now, one trick with the layer is that it's very hard to see where the keyframes are. With, even when you expand it, it's very hard. 
this little button over here, this, this kind of uh, gray box, will enable a higher level keyframe view. So now I can actually see the keyframes on the higher level clip, and it, it represents every keyframe that happens to exist at that point in that particular clip layer. So now I can go in and do the same kind of correction, let's say, here for this hand. So now I'll basically go in here and say, okay, well, that's a little bit far. I'm going to bring that back a little bit. I'm going to push this out back towards the body a little bit, set a key, and then that's going to, again, persist over the entire animation. So those keys may work over the entire animation, or I may need to make some subtle corrections at various points. So right there where he swings his hand in, I might actually want to go in and add a little bit more of an offset at that particular point. Likewise, maybe, um, let's see, go back here right there where he kind of brings that hand forward, that part right there. I might want to bring this out a little bit right there and set a keyframe. And then I can kind of just go in and start to make these corrections uh, where it makes sense. And now those are going to basically just kind of blend uh, for those particular controls at those those times that I've set. So another one is here, he hyperextends his arm there a little bit. So I'll probably want to take that particular hand control and maybe pull it up and maybe bring it in a little bit closer to the body, something like that, and set a keyframe. Take a look at that from the side. And that looks pretty good. It looks good enough anyway. So now what I want to do is actually go in and start to make another change that's a little bit more complicated, and that would be a change to the animation on the foot. So if I take a look at the beginning, right here where he kind of steps forward, right there, the animation with the foot doesn't quite look right. He kind of pulls his leg off, it pops, and then the toe kind of bends in this kind of weird way. So I'm going to go in and add some animation to that as well, some offset animation. But I don't necessarily want to do it on the same layer. So the nice thing about this is I can add as many layers as I need for different objects. So I'm going to grab the foot control. And I'm also going to grab the, the, the toe uh, control. It's actually not the toe control, but it's more like the, the ball control here, which is basically um, the bend of the foot. Now, I, I should have a toe control there as well, but in this particular rig, I don't. But we're not going to worry about that. So I'm going to right click, create an additive animation layer. And you can see that because I had these selected, those will automatically get added. So the channels for those will get added. I could either do it after the fact uh, or during the creation of the layer. Uh, and now I want to go in and just start to make some simple corrections. So right in here where he steps is where I basically want to go in and make a fix. So this may require a little bit of trial and error. Um, again, I want to bring the higher level key view uh, so that I can actually see what I'm doing at a high level without expanding the clip. And I do that with this button here. So now I can see the keys as I set them. But basically what I want to do is as he's stepping forward, I want to kind of fix the bend of the foot there. So as he's coming up here, I want him to kind of bend back and then I want that to straighten there. So I'll say right about there, I want to grab this controller and actually got to make sure I grab the right one. And I want to kind of straighten that out. Maybe so the toe is just barely touching the ground. I'm going to set a key. And now that what will happen is that will just persist over the entire animation. So in the previous example, it was OK for those keys to persist because it kind of made sense all the way through. Here it doesn't because the bend of the toe works correctly there, but it doesn't really work correctly here. So I have to go in and start making some changes. Likewise, here it kind of dips down below the ground. So I basically want to go in and start to tweak this. So I'll go uh, back a few frames, and I'll say here I kind of want to bend the toe there a little bit, but at the same time, I want, might want to bring this control object down, something like that. So I'll take both of these and I'll set a key and I'll just start to see how that looks. Um, that actually is a little bit off there. Now I need to actually adjust the vertical height a little bit so the toe doesn't penetrate through the ground. And this gets a little bit tricky and it's a bit trial and error, but in general, I can start to make this kind of more in line with what I'm trying to do. So right there is a little bit of a pop. I might actually need to bring this uh, foot, actually I probably need to bring this one forward a little bit and then set a key and that overrides what I set before. And then now I can bring this one forward a little bit and now it starts to make a little more sense. Actually, I need to bring that forward even more so I'm just going to continue to kind of trial and error this there, something like that. Uh, right in here, I probably want to start to zero that out at some point. So I don't necessarily, uh, if I zero out the whole thing, 
uh, that might work or I might need to make a little bit more of an offset. Zeroing out will basically, that's this button here, will basically eliminate any offset. So somewhere in here, I need to blend it back with the base animation. So I'll just try it a couple of times. Let's try to zero it out there. That actually probably makes a little more sense. There we go. So now he plants his foot, kind of rolls it forward. Actually, there he lifts it off the ground slightly. So I'll just make a quick adjustment. And now basically every few keyframes, every few keys, I'm going in and I'm setting an adjustment. So here, as he kind of brings his foot forward, I might even want to exaggerate that step a little bit. I might want to actually go in and say, okay, well, he needs to bend his foot here a little bit more, but then maybe you know this controller doesn't need to bend as much. Uh, so I'll just go in and set a couple of keys there. But again, I have to imagine, I have to go in forward and see how that's gonna look kind of as it comes through here, and it doesn't look very good. So somewhere as he's stepping through, I probably wanna add a zero key so it blends back to the original animation. And now he's gonna go right back into that step, and then it looks pretty good from there on out. So I can actually just kind of pull back and just take a look at this as it animates and kind of get an idea. And you can see that's maybe not perfect, but it's a lot better than what I started with. And that's given the kind of limited controls. Now I've got a little bit of a pop right here, but I can probably go in and, and correct that uh, with a couple of additional keyframes. So I might want to actually go in and see which way that's popping. That's kind of going up right there. So I might want to take this and just bring it down ever so slightly like that. And pretty quickly, I should be able to go in here and fix that. Actually, that looks a lot better. So you get the basic idea. Now, if I compare and contrast, I can actually turn that layer off. And this is what it looked like before. So you could see that was the original animation where the toe just does not look right at all. And the placement of the foot doesn't look right at all. Turn the animation layer back on. and that's what the, the animation looks like now. So it's not 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than it was to start with. And with a little refinement, I could get it better than that. Now, the cool thing about this is that because these layers are attached to the clip, they actually go with the clip. So if I were to, to do something like scale the entire clip, let's say, for instance, I go into scale mode, and I take this and I slow it down and make it basically half the speed that it was before, those animation layers are just gonna go along for the ride. So you can see there, even though the animation is slower, we'll pull in and, and take a closer look, even though the animation is slower, the base animation, that step animation, the correction for the foot, just kind of goes along with the ride. So again, that was before, looks weird, that is after with the correction, looks a lot better. So I can scale this, I can move it around, uh, I could take this entire clip and I can you know, offset it in time and I can put it somewhere else and it's gonna work exactly the same and I don't have to worry about independently moving those animation layers or those clip layers. Now this also works in terms of blending. So if I were to blend this clip with another clip, then those layers are gonna get blended as well. So I'm gonna show an example also of how you can do layers at the group level if I were to group clips together. So here's another example of using animation uh, layers or clip layers with multiple clips at the same time. So what you can see here is I've got clip A, which is the blue clip, and then I've got kind of a pop right there, and I've got clip B, which is uh, the orange, or sorry, the green clip, and I wanna get rid of that pop in the middle. And so I'm gonna basically just drag, I've already done the alignment so that one foot kind of lines uh, with the other, the plant foot. And now I'm gonna kind of drag these across and now I've got a transition. So if you look at the upper body, the hands blend nicely and the lower body, the feet blend nicely. But let's say I wanted to add a step here so that as he stepped from right to left or, or his left to right, then he lifted his foot. Well, if I put a layer on the clip itself, then it's only going to affect that clip. But I wanna have it actually stretch across two different clips. So what I can do is I could take these clips, group them together, and then at the group level, I can create an offset clip or an additive clip uh, layer. And that now contains the foot because I had the foot selected. Let's bring up my high level clip display, key display. And now I can go in and I can add an offset that is going to span over both of these clips. So it's gonna go right over the top of the blend basically. So somewhere in here, I wanna go in and I wanna create a kind of a, a uh, step up. So I'm going to create a keyframe there. You can see now that keyframe persists over the first clip and the second clip. 
And from here, I want to start to kind of blend it out. So right in here, I will zero that out. So now he's going to have his foot planted and he's going to lift it up. And then right in here, I want to have him planted again. So right about there, I'm going to zero that out. And now I've created a layer that spans across multiple clips and gives me kind of a correction on top of the blend that is happening between the two. Now, if you want to see kind of before and after, you can mute the clip, uh, the clip layer. That's the original animation. And then if I unmute the clip layer, this is the animation with the clip layer on top of it. And again, this all goes along for the ride. So if I were to take this group and move it around, all of those clip keys go with it. If I were to go in like I showed you before and maybe grab this whole group and kind of scale this out, then all those keys go with it. And even if I were to go in and change the blend, if I were to go in and say, for instance, overlap the blend a little bit more or a little bit less, then those keys are going to go along for the ride. So you can see the, the vertical height offset is still there. It's just happening relative to a different point in the blending of the clips. So hopefully that makes sense and you get an idea of how useful these clip layers can be.